Hey everyone, Shane here with ROA Off-Road or RVs of America. I today, I get this question asked all the time, why should I buy an off-road camper or should I buy an off-road camper if I'm never planning on going off-road? So today I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I think it would be a good idea to buy an off-road camper, even if you plan to never go off-road. First off, there's a huge difference between on-road and off-road campers. The, the reality is the quality is the biggest and the most important thing when it comes to off-road campers. As you can see, if you look around here, we are at an RV park. And if you watch us and you follow us, you might think this is kind of strange is because we're not typically at campgrounds or RV parks. Now I will tell you, and no, uh, no shame in it, I go to campgrounds all the time. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons to go to campgrounds on trips when you're traveling places. So I'm not like this anti-campground person. These off-road campers, they, they fit in, well, they don't quite fit in because they're so cool looking when you pull into these campgrounds. A lot of people are gonna be like, whoa, that thing is so cool. But typically here at ROA, we are trying to showcase how these campers can go anywhere. Uh, you know, a lot of people call in all the time and they say, man, the places that you take those campers are crazy. I would never want to go there. But I do really want a quality trailer. And the reputation of the camper industry in America is they don't build quality trailers. And now I want to tell you a few reasons what it is that makes an off-road camper different from an on-road camper and why you should consider an off-road camper over any camper that you can buy in America. More than anything else, it's the quality. The longevity of the camper is gonna hold up way beyond anything else out there in the market. And you know, you can come to a campground like this. You can enjoy the facilities. You know, we come to campgrounds when we're in our travels because they got swimming pools and they got facilities. You can fill up your water, you can charge your batteries. Typically, I like to be off-grid, right? I, I Like 90% of my camping is off-grid, but you know, we have all the same hookups and power components as any other standard trailer. So you can come here and plug in and have water and fill up and, and then you can go off-grid. But in between, you know, being off-grid, it's nice to have a place to stop and get all stocked up and, and filled up and then move on to your next adventure. Or you can always go to campgrounds. Because it's off-road doesn't mean you have to take it off-road, right? That may be obvious, but for some people, we get that question all the time, right? The, the, the thing is, an off-road camper is more expensive than a standard camper. That's just the reality. And the reason is because it's built, in some instances, 10 times better. Like, some of the components on these cost twice as much, sometimes three times as much. Some of them are 10 times as much. For example, the latches. The latches in an off-road camper, most of them are 10 times as expensive as what you're gonna get in a standard camper. The latches on the outside compartment doors, the hinges, right? They, they all cost at least five times, sometimes 10X, because the, the standard ones are these little butterfly things, they fall apart, they just rattle loose, and they break. And they break on the on-road campers, even though they're on-road, they still break. These are designed to go off-road and hopefully not break, which means, when you are on road, the longevity of your camper and everything in it is going to withstand so much better than a standard on-road camper. And now one of the things that I wanna talk about that's so, so, so important in an off-road camper that you don't get in standard campers in the United States is the suspension. The suspension in most standard campers in America are solid axles, and leaf springs. And solid axles and leaf springs are the same type of suspension that they've been using in horse carriages in the 1800s. Yes, that's correct. You heard me right. Horse carriages use leaf springs and solid axles. And that's what cars have been using for the first part of the 19th century all the way until the last 20 or 30 years. GM and some cars started coming out with this thing called independent suspension. I don't know the exact date. And that suspension has completely changed the way cars drive. If you go and get in a truck, you know, uh, an old truck from the 80s or uh, 70s, every bump you hit, it's like the whole truck rattles you, right? Um, and the reason is because of the suspension, because it's a leaf spring or solid axle suspension. Now, the pluses of it is it's pretty heavy duty, but nowadays, you know, coils and gas shocks and independent suspension can be equally as heavy duty. And the difference in the ride quality is night and day. The difference is like 
driving a truck from the 80s that's all solid axles and leaf springs to driving a Cadillac with all independent suspension. It's, it's night and day. Now, all the standard trailers in America are still using leaf springs and solid axles, which means when you drive down the road and you hit a bump, the whole trailer essentially bounces and falls back down and it shakes and it rattles. And, and, and you gotta think about a camper. The, a camper or a trailer, it, it's like a house on wheels, right? You imagine putting your house on wheels and vibrating it. It's, it's going through an earthquake every time you move it somewhere. And, and that's the difference between an off-road trailer and an on-road trailer is they, they understand this and so they, they make sure they engineer everything to withstand more rigorous terrain so that it doesn't fall apart and break. So I mentioned the latches earlier. The nice thing is most of them are locking latches. Most on-road trailers don't have locking latches. So when you're driving down the road and you make a sharp turn, they all open up and they're flying all over the place, which means the cabinets break, they fall apart. You know, things fall out and fall on the floor and they shatter and they break. This has happened. This has happened to me. I had a jar of pickle juice. We we're on a race in a motorhome. This is a $100,000 motorhome. And we'd make a sharp turn, the cabinet opens, a a bottle of pickle juice falls out on the ground, shatters everywhere. It was a mess, right? Uh, that can't happen in these trailers because the latches actually lock in and engage. They don't actually release whether it's rocking around. And we have, we've taken these things on off-road and crazy terrains that you would never take a standard trailer. You couldn't even consider it. And this cabinet stays shut and everything's inside shut. I've been down in Mexico hitting the off-road going 40, 50 miles per hour and, and just bouncing the heck out of this thing. And it's just, it's amazing. Independent suspension. I believe it's the way of the future. It is the way of the future of every automobile. And why wouldn't it be the way of the future for trailers? But the American trailer industry is typically running anywhere from 50 to 100 years behind, but maybe in 50 years, you'll start seeing all the American made trailers with independent suspension, but that will also come with a price increase, you know, because it costs more money and you pay for what you get, right? The, the last thing I want to talk about is power system. Cause a lot of people think, you know, like these off grid systems, you know, these trailers, they have, they have more robust power systems, right? They have solar, uh, they have, bigger battery banks usually. They have inverter systems. And I don't wanna to get too much into the technical stuff, but the main thing is like their power systems are more robust. And you might be like, well, if I'm just going to trailer parks, I don't necessarily need that because I'll be able to always be plugged in. If you're new to camping and trailering, there's something that I need to tell you. And a lot of people don't know this until they actually go out and camp. But most standard American trailers do not come built to totally run everything off grid. You have to be plugged in. And you may say, I'm gonna always be plugged in, it's because I'm not gonna do crazy off-road stuff. But let me tell you, Yellowstone, Yosemite, Zion National Park, the Grand Canyon, most of these parks do not have full hookups. Most of these sites are actually considered dry camping, which means you don't have water, you don't have sewage, and you don't have electricity. So, you know, when you go out and buy a brand new camper, you know, like just a standard American camper, you're gonna find out real quick when you go out and you're in Yellowstone having such a great time. Yeah, the water systems work off of batteries. Um, the fridges work off of batteries and propane and lights work off. But if you wanna plug in a cell phone, if you wanna plug in a laptop, if you wanna watch a movie with your kids, what if you wanna, you know, run your air conditioning? What a lot of people don't know is most standard campers cannot do that unless they're plugged in to a power source because their batteries are way too small, not capable enough to do that, and they don't have the correct systems and componentry in them to be able to run any of that stuff unless they're plugged in completely. And that's just something that, you know, you, you make the, mistake and you go and buy it and you think, well, this camper is so much cheaper. Those off-road campers cost more, but it's like, yeah, but when you're putting an electrical system in it, that's anywhere from five to 10 grand more expensive. That's the reason why it costs more. Another thing that I need to talk about when it comes to electrical systems is the batteries. Batteries are probably the biggest pain point in trailer or camper ownership, or it used to be for us and for our customers. We don't call our, the people that buy from us customers, they're roamers, right? So for our roamers in the past, it was the biggest pain point. And the reason why was because most standard campers that we used to sell in the past, they didn't have solar systems, right? So when you park it out next to your house and you have it in storage, if you're not very vigilant, making sure it's plugged in, making sure it's charging, if you're not vigilant in the battery maintenance, 
uh, more common than not, you're replacing the battery every single season. I see people replacing batteries every single year and they're not cheap. They're not, they're not inexpensive. It's one of the biggest pain points in camper, trailer, or RV ownership in that I think that we've ever had is because people are doing it over and over and over and over and over. When we were carrying more standard American trailers in the past, we spent somewhere upwards of ten to $20,000 a year on batteries. And the reason is because even if we are super vigilant and good at maintaining the batteries, it's inevitable. Somebody goes in, somebody, a customer walk off, walks off the street and walks into one of your campers, looks at it, they turn a light on, they leave it on. You have no idea, right? You got over a hundred campers on your lot. You have no idea. And you come back in and their batteries are toast. And deep cycle batteries in the RV industry, the way they work is if they drain all the way to zero, typically it can ruin them. And so you're done. One time, you make one mistake one time, leave one thing on one time. It's not like a car where you just go and jump it and you're back to life. A lot of times that's not the case. You're done and you're going and buying new batteries. And that's really frustrating. Now, off-road, off-grid trailers, most of them, the ones that we're carrying, the one that I'm sitting in front of, have solar panels standard on the roof. What that means is if it's parked next to your garage, it doesn't die. It's always charged. You go out into the middle of nowhere, it's charging. Uh, and it is so, so, so wonderful. You know that ten dollars to $20,000 expense that we used to incur every single year has gone. Because our, our entire lot is filled only with off-road trailers. And all the ones with the solar panels, the batteries are always fully charged. I don't mean to rant and talk so much about this, but if you're a new... If you're a new owner, if you're really looking to buy a camper or a trailer and you're considering, you know, why should I buy an off-road one versus an on-road one? There are so, so many reasons. Everything from the latches to the suspension to the, the battery system. And it's, it's the longevity. The reason why you go out and buy a camper is because you want to go out and have fun. You want to camp. You want to enjoy yourself. You want to go places with your family. And when you're having issues constantly you're having to fix things constantly then camper ownership becomes not really fun next thing you know you're selling it because you're not enjoying it you know and so so that that's it there's there's a lot of other things that i could mention from the the construction from the frame you know everything on these vehicles are more robust. The hitch systems are better. They're better for towing it and they're more balanced, weighted better because they're designed for that off-road, but it also makes the on-road experience so much better. And so it doesn't matter whether you ever go off-road. Off-road camper is by far the best thing you can buy on the market over anything else. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please make them below and I'd love to answer them. We can make another video if you want us to go into more details on anything that we were talking about. But don't forget to subscribe and like I said, make some comments. We do read them and we will reply. And thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.